Good afternoon. This is Jenna Ayole for Abolition News Network, April 18th, 1841, welcoming today somebody who can answer some questions uh, that we've been wondering for a very long time. Where does our almighty, infinite, benevolent God stand on the subject of human bondage? Does he approve or disapprove of owning slaves? Welcome Dr. William Channing, Doctor of Divinity from Harvard University, pastor of the Federal Street Unitarian Church of Boston, Massachusetts. Good day to you. Hello, good morning. Um, first, Dr. Channing, since you wrote a book on slavery in 1835, what do you feel slavery really is in a few words? I said at the beginning of the book, basically, the conviction of good men through the world that slavery is a grievous wrong to human nature will make itself felt. Every man has the power to express this great truth and can do something to break the chain of the slave. Hmm. I see. So, is it against Christianity? I would say it violates the great teaching of Christianity, that we must recognize and respect human nature in all its forms, in the poorest, most ignorant, and most fallen. We must look beneath the flesh to the spirit. To overlook this on account of condition of color violates the great Christian law. Hmm. All right. Um, so now can you answer the question, would God be opposed to slavery as it is practiced today in the southern United States? Miss Olay, to answer that, I'll use one topic as an example. Labor. The motive by which a slave is made to labor. Labor, in one form or another, is appointed by God for man's improvement and happiness and absorbs the chief part of human life. A man who works from honorable motives, which will open him to greater happiness and usefulness, finds labor a virtue. Slave labor, on the other hand, brings no dignity, no virtue but rather degradation. So one of God's chief provisions for human happiness becomes a curse. You ask if God would approve of today's practice of slavery with the whip and chains? Yes, please answer. Let me say this. Did God make a being to be owned as a tree or a brute as property? No. He was plainly made to exercise and improve his highest powers, made for a moral, spiritual good. No such right of property in a human being can exist. A human being cannot be justly owned. He is wronged and opposed to his creator when he is forced and broken into a tool to another's physical enjoyment. Wow, thank you. Um, now, let's talk about emancipation of the slaves. Would you be in favor of immediate emancipation um, as proposed by William L. Garrison and his abolitionists here in Boston? Absolutely not. The slave would not support himself and his children by honest means, that having always worked under compulsion, he will not labor of his own will. There is no spring of exertion in his mind. The freed slave has to have a kind, benevolent guardian, as a slave master, to steer him toward the right behavior, with awards given, and teach him Christianity. But the abolitionists? Uh, yes. The abolitionists have adopted that erroneous motto, immediate emancipation. To this they owe their unpopularity. There system of agitation has not been justified by success. Their influence in the South has been almost wholly evil. So, I don't get what you're saying. If slavery is evil and immediate emancipation is bad agitation, then how will the slaves ever go free? Freedom would produce idleness, crime, misery, and ruin. Slaves never had responsibilities of domestic life. It is up to the slaveholders. How slavery shall be resolved is a question for them, and one which they alone can fully answer. 
I said in my book, emancipation cannot do until the slave is truly, sincerely, with the mind and heart, recognized as a man, till he ceases to be regarded as property. I hate to throw in the towel or the wet blanket, but that will never happen. You are namby-pamby. Do you feel you're a good Christian? Do you love thy neighbor as thyself? Matthew chapter 22, 39. Your solution is to put forth a pithily pathesis plan. Slavery is an institution founded in wrong, imbued with injustice and cannot be perpetuated by being improved or agitating over it. So your main point is you don't have the courage to stand and fight. That can get you into trouble, Miss... Wire. Barb Wire. Let me explain it to you this way, Miss Barb Wire. One of the great principles of Christianity, which we should lay down as immovably true, is that if a good work cannot be carried on by the calm, self-controlled, benevolent spirit of Christianity, then the time for doing it has not come. There is a worse evil than abolitionism, and that is the suppression of it by lawless force. A community giving up any of its citizens to violence is preparing for itself the same fate. So, you say now is the time to do nothing and just watch the suffering. It's just that the adoption of a system of agitation by the abolitionists has not been justified by success. I earnestly desire that they assess the form of troublemaking you are recommending and seek to end slavery by wiser and milder means. God asks not for the aid of our vices. He can overrule them for good but they are not the chosen instruments of human happiness. So then you're just going to turn your back on the slave. Miss, Miss Wire, um, maybe we should go back to our Christianity or go into scripture to try to find a solution to this. Uh, Dr. Channing, can you summarize or find something in the New or Old Testament to um, help on this? If we go by the scriptures, we have the argument to support slavery that it is allowed in the Old Testament and not condemned in the New. Paul even commands his slaves to obey. But the general rule of scripture criticism is that specific passages should be introduced in order to support the general tenor and spirit of Christianity. And what is the perpetual teaching in regard to social duty? All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So let's get to the point. Yes, somebody please get to the point before I die of exasperation. The fact that the gospel does not forbid slavery gives no reason to suppose it does not mean to prohibit it. Much less does it afford forward ground for, uh, that Jesus Christ intended to authorize it. Thank you, um, Dr. Channing. Um, I guess you can conclude that slavery is unjust and that um, God will have to resort to some other means to bring it to an end without using abolitionists or pacifists. This is Jenna Ayole for Abolition News Network saying good afternoon.